Hello and welcome to lesson 33 of Additional Maths with Mr. Barrow. Today we are going to be looking at beginning the process of finding the gradient of a curve. Okay, today we're going to be looking at estimating the gradient of a curve by using a numerical method. So I'll teach you methods such as finding a central estimate of the gradient of a curve and finding one sided estimates of the gradient of a curve. But before we start, Let's look at what it means to find the gradient of a curve and the different ways that are available to us. So let's say we have this blue curve here, y equals some function of x. And it curves up like that. At every point on the curve, because it is curving, the gradient is changing. It starts off quite steep. And as we go along the curve, it gets less steep. So the gradient is decreasing as we are going along the curve from left to right. So it is quite difficult to find the exact value of the gradient at any point. If it were a straight line, it would be very easy. The st any straight line has a constant gradient. The gradient is the same throughout the straight line. All we need to calculate is the change in y divided by the change in x. For a curve though, because the gradient is constantly changing, we need to find other ways of finding the gradient at any one point on the curve. So let's say I want to find the gradient at this point P. At the GCC level, when you're asked to find an estimate for the gradient at a point on a curve, you're expected to do, take a ruler and try and estimate, judge with, with, with your eye, a sort of a straight line that's going kind of in the direction of the curve at that point. So my ruler is here and it's sort of in that direction. And it seems like the curve is going that direction at that point. If it was further along the curve near the start, the curve's sort of going in that direction, a bit more, a bit steeper. At the end of the curve, it's sort of going in, in about that direction. So at P, it's going in this direction here. So I could draw a straight line that goes through P, that goes along that straight line. And that there is approximately the tangent to the curve at P. If I've done it perfectly, then that would be the tangent to the curve at P. But I've done it, you know, just estimating it. So it might not be the best tangent I could have drawn. So at GCC level, you'll be expected to draw the tangent and then take two points on that tangent and find the gradient. So one of the ways in which to find the gradient of the curve at P is estimate with a self-drawn tangent. So once you've drawn the tangent, you then take any two points. So you could choose P and then another point, let's say Q up here, and then do the change in Y divided by the change in X. So this distance divided by this distance. And then you've got an estimate for the gradient of the curve at the point P. Okay, so that's one of the ways. Another way is to use two points on the curve, which are very close together. So you could use two points, one being P and one being Another point, let's call this, so the one we used earlier was Q1. Let's call this next one, so on the curve, let's call it Q2. And so then find the gradient of a straight line joining P with Q. Okay. So the second S is by choosing two points on the curve close together. And then finding the gradient between those two points. OK, and the third way, which we're going to learn in lessons 36 and 37, is the exact way. It's using something called calculus. Calculus, and specifically differentiation, is the study of instantaneous change of things like curves. So calculus will give us the exact value of the gradient at any point, and we'll learn about that in lessons 36 and 37. Today, what we're going to be focusing on is the second one.
So going beyond GCSE is looking at two points on the curve and, and thinking about which two points we should choose, which would give us a good estimate for the gradient of the curve at the point P. Okay, so the different methods we could use, one of them is called the central estimate method, and another one is called the one-sided estimate. Okay, so we're going to look at the central estimate method first. The central estimate method is all about thinking of P as being the center value of X and then choosing two values of X either side of P. So thinking of a point with an X value X minus something and another point the same value the other side of x, so x plus that something. Let's call it x minus h and x plus h. So this distance that I've gone away from x is h. I've gone h to the left of x and I've gone h to the right of x. So the point p has an x coordinate which is in the center of the two coordinates that I'm going to use. So I then find these other two coordinates. So I find these other two coordinates. And once I've done that, I draw a chord joining those two points. So I get my straight line, my ruler, and I join those two coordinates and create a chord, which will estimate. So it will be similar to, hopefully if I've done it well, it should be similar to the gradient of the actual tangent at p. So if my tangent at p is something like that, my chord, yeah, yeah, it definitely has a very similar gradient to the gradient at p. Okay, so this is called a chord. A chord is a straight line joining two points on a curve. And this is the tangent to the curve at p. So that we're trying to find the gradient of the tangent. The chord is what we use to get an estimate for that gradient. Okay, so if y is equal to f of x, then the y coordinates at each of these points where x is x plus h and the x coordinate is x minus h are as follows. So if I plug x plus h into the function, I get f of x plus h as an output. So that's my coordinate on the right. My coordinate on the left, so this coordinate here, It has an x-coordinate of x minus h, so the y-coordinate will be f of x minus h. So I'm just doing it algebraically at the moment, and then I'm going to show you it specifically with an example in a minute. So if we wrote down then the formula for the central estimate, okay, so the central estimate will be equal to the gradient of this chord, which is the change in the y coordinates divided by the change in the x coordinates. The change in the y coordinates are, are f of x plus h minus, so this y coordinate, take away this y coordinate. That'll be the change in the y coordinates. So f of x plus h minus f of x minus h. And it'll be divided by the change in the x coordinates. Now the change in the x coordinates is this distance here, which is x plus h take away x minus h, but you should see using common sense that that is a value of 2h. So that is the formula which gives you the central estimate. Once you've found that, you've got a, a pretty good estimate for the gradient of the tangent. If you choose points which are very close together either side, so maybe go 0.1 to the left and 0.1 to the right, it's better than going seven units to the left and seven units to the right, okay? So the closer you can get, generally, the better the estimate will be. So let's look at it. another one. I'll briefly discuss this one. So a one-sided estimate just basically chooses the point P and a point to one side. So I could choose the point P with the point where the coordinate is x plus h, f of x plus h. 
So that would create a forward estimate where I go from point P and do a chord to a point forward from P. So the forward estimate would be f of x plus h minus f of x over just h this time. Okay, because the change in nx would just be h. The backward estimate would be choosing a point to the left. So backwards from point P. So that point there, which has an x-coordinate of x minus h, y-coordinate of f of x minus h. So the backward estimate would be f of x minus f of x minus h over h. Okay, and those are the formulae for that. I'm going to focus, though, with my worked examples on just the central estimate. So let's have a look at this question here. Find a central estimate with a step of 0.1 for the gradient of y equals x squared at the point 864. So I like visualizing the problem, so I'm going to just quickly sketch what the curve y equals x squared looks like around the point 8, where x is 8. So it'll be curving up at that point. There's the point 864. So I want to do a step of 0.1. So I want to go 0.1 to the left. So let's say this is the point 0.1 to the left. So that has an x coordinate of 7.9. We'll work out the y coordinate in a second. And because it's a central estimate, I need to go 0.1 both sides of that coordinate. So the next coordinate will be 8.1 comma something. Okay. So because the curve is y is equal to x squared, I can find out the values of the y coordinate if the x coordinate is 7.9, it'll be 62. 0.41. And I'll find the value of y when x is 8.1, that's 65.61. So the points that I'm interested in are the one in front by 0.1 in the x direction and the one behind by 0.1 in the x direction. And the, the chord that I'm interested in finding the gradient of is the chord between those two points approximately looks like that. So I'll find the gradient of that chord there and that there will be my estimate for the gradient of the actual curve at 864. So my central estimate will be the change in y which is 65.61 minus 62.41 divided by the change in x, 8.1 minus 7.9. Or you could have done 2h there, and 2h being 0 0.2, and you can see that that will be 0 0.2. So this is 3.2 as the change in y, divided by 0 0.2, which is the change in x, and that gives us a gradient of 16, which in actuality is an extremely good estimate. In fact, it's the exact gradient of the curve at 864. Okay, our central estimate generally doesn't give us the exact value. It'll give us something close to it. But this, in fact, has given it. And if you once, once you've learned about differentiation, you'll see why 16 is the gradient of the curve y equals x squared when x is 8. Okay, it's time for you to have a go now one yourself. I want you to find the central estimate with a step of one this time. For the gradient of the curve y equals 2x cubed at the point 7, 686. So pause at this point, have a go, and then I'm going to show you the answer. Okay, so the solution, our curve will look something like this. You have a point in the middle, 7, 686. So if you go one either side, you're going to a point with an x-coordinate of 6 and a an, and an point the other side with an x-coordinate of 8. 
Eight has a y coordinate of 1024. Six has an x coordinate, uh, has a y coordinate of 432. And I'm interested in those two coordinates. And my central estimate will equal 1024 minus 432 divided by 8 take away 6. It's 592 divided by 2. So that's 296. So that there is my estimate, the gradient of the curve at the point where x is 7. If you got that correct, superb. Okay. When you've done differentiation, if you can come back to this lesson and then find the exact value of the gradient and see how close you were, then that would be great. So what you should do now is you should go to the textbook and have a go at questions from exercise 13.4, the fourth exercise in chapter 13. Next lesson, we're going to look at more numerical methods and uh, and then we're going to go on in lesson 36 onto the new chapter, which is all about calculus and differentiation and integration. So go away and enjoy practicing finding gradients using this estimation method. Enjoy.